uh, hearing more from the president today on this. With us now, we have member of the House Homeland Security Committer Committee and Subcommittee on Counterterrorism and Intelligence, U.S. Congressman from New York, Peter King. Joe, um, big questions, obviously, will be surrounding security moving forward, given that this was an act of terrorism. Well, you know, the further we get away from an incident like 9-11, the more we yeah. think that we're immune to incidents like 9-11, just like after Peter King, after the Soviet Union fell, there were some yeah. declaring the end of history. No, history just got a lot messier. Mm -hmm. How safe are American uh, uh, air passengers? I know right after 9-11, a lot of us were concerned about, uh, about planes being shot out of the sky from people hiding at the end of runways. Uh, how how yeah. safe how safe are, are Americans from uh, from not incidents just like this, but from from being shot out of the sky? Uh, well, Joe, it's safer than we were on 9/11. But as a practical matter, it's almost impossible to equip civilian aircraft uh, with uh, anti-missile defenses. I mean, it's uh, that's sort of the unwritten rule we have. It not the unwritten. The written rule is that civilian. Uh, uh, airline is supposed to be exempt from this. Now, as far as you know, the man pad that the runaway uh, terrorists may have, uh, the Israeli planes I know are equipped against that. The cost of that would be uh, phenomenal, and there's been very little instances of it really. And what we saw here was either state terrorism or state orchestrated terrorism by the Russians and the Ukrainian separatists. But on the uh, larger issue of airline security, this could be a wake up call to the Europeans because uh, just as far as uh, basic everyday security in airlines, uh, a number of European countries are not as concerned as America is. And we often have to fight to get passenger manifests, uh, to have them uh, provide the uh, uh, scrutiny of passengers going on the flights, because the further we get from 9-11, uh, a number of countries, including the Europeans and certainly countries in the Middle East, are not <coughs> as uh, 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 determined as we are, and now with all these uh, foreign fighters in Syria who have European uh, passports that can fly to the U.S., this may be a wake-up call to realize how vulnerable we still are. But as far as being uh, uh, protected against missile attacks like this, uh, to me, uh, Russia has to bear the responsibility because we can't be uh, arming and equipping every passenger flight in the, right. in, in the world. It will be impossible. What's our next step towards Russia, towards Vladimir Putin? I think we have to, first of all, obviously take this very seriously. If I can say, to follow up on what Andrea said before, and I'm trying not to be partisan here, Joe, but we need more leadership from the president. I mean, he gave this a passing reference in the speech in Delaware. They went on to tell Joe Biden jokes and take some you know, usual shots of Republicans, which is fair game, but not on this day. And then to go to New York and hold two fundraisers. Like, I can't imagine Eisenhower or Kennedy or Reagan doing that. So I think it's important for the president to really come out today and show that he is the world leader and line up uh, European economic sanctions against Russia. I think we should even consider the idea of even uh, at least temporarily suspending uh, landing rights for Aeroflot in in our airports in Europe and, uh, and uh, any other allies oh. we have around the world. At least hold that out as a threat against Putin to realize that this is not just an accident. This isn't just something that happened. He's at least criminally negligent on this. Congressman King, this is Gene mm. Robinson. Um, yeah, Gene. Is there a cautionary lesson here for us in terms of, uh, you know, people were talking about giving heavy weapons to moderate rebels in Syria, um, and perhaps even anti-aircraft weapons. Uh, is, is this a cautionary lesson for us as we think about how to help people who share our values against people who don't share our values, but what might happen if weapons fall into the wrong hands? Yeah, Gene, that's something we always have to keep in mind. Now, I don't think we've ever given any, uh, any uh, non-state organization the type of weaponry that the Ukrainian separatists appear to have had here. And as far as Syria, you know, I had uh, been a long time supporting us arming uh, moderate ele uh, elements among the, uh, you know, the Syrian rebels. Uh, but I'll tell you, I think that time has passed. I think that uh, there's just so much of uh, infiltration by al-Nusra, by ISIS in into these groups. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I agree with you on this. I think it would be too risky to give any type of heavy weaponry at all mm -hmm. uh, to uh, these groups in Syria. I think the time has passed for that. Yeah. Congressman Peter King, thank you very much. Still ahead, we're going to go live mm -hmm. to the two places where a